Susan was an unemployed, middle-aged spinster from Blackburn in Scotland. She lived on her own, she had a little council house, but she had a big dream. Susan Boyle was a regular performer in local pubs, but always aspired to greater things. I wanted to be a, a professional singer for many years, for 23 years, so I auditioned for uh, Barrymore. I originally applied for X Factor, and I got as far as the preliminaries there. So I thought, I'll make Simon Cole. We'll see him in another context. So I decided to apply for the, the programme Britain's Got Talent. When she sort of sashayed out onto that stage, you didn't expect anything from her. And I remember thinking, oh, is she, what is she wearing? You know, awful, bitchy kind of things that are excruciatingly embarrassing to admit. How old are you, Susan? I am 47. On the shuffle, Susan, and I'm like, oh, God, she's either a singer or a comedian. I'm not in the mood for this. And she does it behave in a rather odd way, and it all seemed vaguely crackers. And that's just one side of me. I said, well, enjoy yourself and be blooming cheeky about it and see, see what the outcome is. So we just decided to play a bit and have some fun. What are you going to sing tonight? I'm going to sing I Dreamed a Dream from the Miserables. OK. Big song. <laughs> ah, big, big song. As if to say, you have no hope of singing that song in anything but an appalling manner. I dreamed a dream in time gone by. I turned to Simon and Amanda and we all just went, what? You just didn't expect that, did you? Did you? No. It was just, it was amazing. I just remember feeling so embarrassed that I judged her and hated myself for being shallow. As That's the moment you live for. It's that moment of surprise, and you feel it behind you with the audience when you've got someone special. Let's be honest, nobody knew the outcome. It was completely unrehearsed. In fact, I thought I would be buzzed the minute they saw me swallowing my hips. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'd be good enough to get through and get as far as I've gone. When she finished, the whole place just erupted. I mean, it was it was an incredible thing, which I've never seen before or since. Susan Boyle, you can go back to the village with your head held high. It's three S's. I thought, oh my God, what have I done? <laughs> Watched by an audience of 10 million viewers, overnight Susan Boyle had become a household name, but no one could predict what would happen next. The sort of new modern media turned her into a global superstar. Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. It happened so rapidly and it went global so quickly. It's a very human story that crosses boundaries and continents and countries. Everybody understands that story. Susan's audition became the world's most watched internet clip in 2009. like a giant whirlwind at first. You didn't really know where you were or what was going to happen next. It was really exciting. Susan Boyle is now appearing in newspaper headlines around the world. All ask is Susan Boyle. Susan Boyle. The voice and the life story of Susan Boyle. When the satellite appeared on my doorstep for American television, I thought, oh, my God, I haven't even paid my licence. I'm not letting these ones in, no way. So to dismantle my aerial. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a green I was at the time. Understandably, TV's newest star found the level of media attention hard to cope with. The papers were non-stop writing about and she's having an emotional breakdown. Is it too much for Susan? Should she have been allowed on the show? It was a very, very intense week. 
It's very surreal. It's as if, it's as if you're in a kind of goldfish bowl of your own, you know, with people looking in. It can be quite terrifying. And every day the story was that she was cracking under pressure. I mean, it was, it was bad. So I got her in to see me into my dressing room. And I said, look, to be honest with you, Susan, I think you've got a great career ahead of you, whether you go into the finals or not. You can walk away, and nobody's going to think that you're a quitter. And, and she said, no, I want to do it. She said, I wouldn't forgive myself if I, if I didn't have the chance. Under enormous pressure, Susan performed in the final in front of 18 million viewers. But there was another surprise in store for the bookies' favourite. The winner of Britain's Got Talent 2009 is... It was Dex's turn to see the winner, and down you really here, it's diversity. What? what? It's diversity. Diversity! Uh, that, was a, that was a very big shock at our final. You couldn't believe that she hadn't won. It was one of the most dramatic moments of television ever, I think. Well, what a fantastic competitor. Susan, how, how do you feel right now? Now, these people won. Losing was a difficult thing for her to deal with. She'd sort of been told by everybody, you're going to walk, this is going to be easy, and then she came second. And I think she found that a really big blow. Susan Boyle's been admitted to a clinic suffering from exhaustion. Psychologists, relatives and even Gordon Brown have been discussing the well-being of Susan Boyle today. She got... was just terribly worried that, you know, she'd had this incredible weeks of global attention and that it was all going to disappear overnight and come to an end. But as it turned out, Susan Boyle's dream wasn't over. Nice to see you. She was in high demand across the globe. Could you speak some Chinese? So little. Oh! And released the fastest selling album of 2009. Nobody knew how things were going to go three years ago. I certainly didn't imagine that things would take off so well. I'm excited. I look forward to doing more albums in the future, if they'll let me. And I look forward to entertaining people for many years to come. The Susan Boyle story absolutely epitomises what talent shows are all about. Somebody who lived a dream, never got a chance to realise it, and then gets her chance and takes it. Persuaded you to allow this to happen and to get involved? Well, because it happened so quickly, because uh, the, the, the story had an appeal, sort of magical appeal, if you like, and as Pauline said, it was a kind of fairy story, a dream come true for someone, and it would sort of um, be an example for other people. Now at 8.10, with an exclusive interview with singer Susan Boyle, she became, of course, an overnight sensation after auditioning on Britain's Got Talent in 2009. Well, today, national correspondent Amy Robach traveled across the pond to catch up with her and find out how she's doing now. Hey, Amy. Good morning. Hi, and good morning to you. And despite all of Susan Boyle's international fame and success, she still lives a relatively normal life in her native Scotland. And that's where I recently caught up with her at home for what turned out to be a candid conversation about life, Love, music, and Donny Osmond. Hi there, how are you? Hi, Susan. This is for you. And I'm Amy. Hi, Amy. So nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And so nice to be able to be here in your Thank brand new you. beautiful home. Stepping into Susan Boyle's home, which she jokingly refers to as the posh house, it's easy to see the great contrast her life has become. Here in a quaint and picturesque part of Scotland's countryside, Susan's life seems pretty ordinary. Hi, you doing? Good. Thanks. Except for the fact that everywhere she goes, almost everyone knows who she is. Susan, hello there. So where are you from then? Her international fame coming overnight following an audition two years ago on Britain's Got Talent that wowed the judges and audience alike. I dreamed a dream in time gone by. Have you ever gone back and watched that original audition? I've seen it once or twice and said to myself, what the heck are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I walked on, I was dressed like a cake, black tights, white shoes. I thought, what the heck were you thinking about? <sighs> 
I mean, it was like a doily and legs. <laughs> and then you see yourself now in the mirror. Well, that's thanks to uh, a lot of training I've had. And it was obvious in that addition, I, I like confidence. Look at me, that's a complete contrast. It's a complete contrast, and that's a good one. So how would you describe how your life has changed from 2009 to today? It's changed because I'm more confident within myself. It's changed because I've, I've met a lot of nice people. Any of them male? You mean Donny Osmond? <laughs> Come this way! <laughs> Are you open to meeting someone? I think I would probably say I would be guarded in that area. So you're not online dating right now? No. <laughs> hey, come on, with teeth like mine, you're kidding. <laughs> Do you see yourself possibly dating and getting married? When I meet the right person, I will know, and so will he. And that's all I'm prepared to say. <laughs> Hi there, how you doing? <laughs> Hi, neighbor. Hello. Just down the street from Susan Boyle's new home is the house she grew up in. She still owns it and, in fact, stays here most of the time. You sleep here. Mm-hmm. Even though you got that big house down the street. Well, the big house down the street isn't really me because I'm not really the type of person to live in a big mansion. When I'm back in this space, well, my mom and dad, I still feel close to them. I still have a lot of nice memories in this house. I feel this is my comfort zone. And that's why you keep your Donny Osmond blanket here. <laughs> There's no answer to that. <laughs> ah, yes, the Donny Osmond blanket. Ooh, baby, baby, you can count on me. That's what we call a he man. <laughs> <laughs> Given to Susan by one of her fans. I just love the texture, too. It is so cozy, right? Mm -hmm. It's the next best thing you cuddle. <laughs> a Donny cuddle. I like it. Donny up the stairs with me. Even before she was famous, music played a big role in Susan Boyle's life. The difference is, now she has a much bigger audience. She has sold over 15 million albums worldwide since her debut release in 2009. And her new album, Someone to Watch Over Me, will be released on November 1st. The title song, Someone to Watch Over Me, uh, is beautiful but it begs the question do you have a personal connection to that song do you have someone to watch over you I've always had my mother to watch over me and I think that's really quite a, a nice thought that she's still there with me I think she probably wanted this to happen well she wanted you to get on to Britain's Got Talent correct not just Britain's Got Talent she wants to be a professional singer and you've done that just just slightly <laughs> I bet you could never have predicted this five years ago if you had seen yourself now. Well, five years ago, I wasn't in a good place, but I'm in a better place now. If you could name your top three goals for the next phase of this, what would they be? To keep going, to uh, keep getting better at what I'm doing, to make people happy. That's three goals. I've got to achieve all. Over.